you have big dreams. Now, I'm ask people, do you have big dreams? Do you? Because people say, well, I don't see a way. Well, you know what I love is I serve a God that does. And there's a lot of things that I could not see a way of. But when I put my faith, my hope, and my trust in the Lord, He's brought it to fruition. Welcome. We are so glad that you have chosen to join us today. We pray that you are blessed by the music and the ministry of the service you are about to participate in. We are so glad that you have chosen to be here, and we pray that you are blessed. Now, if this is your first time, we ask that you let us know where you're watching from, because we have people in so many different countries. And if this message touches you, if there's something that blesses you, please leave a comment, give us a thumbs up, a heart. We just love it when you show your praise for what God is ministering to you. It's not for us, this is all about Him. So we want you to be a participant, not just an observer in this service with us today. And if there's some way that you need to contact us, if you have a question, if you need prayer, if you need a Bible, our information will be at the end of the video where you can reach out to us, you can call us, you can message us, through Facebook, there's so many different ways, but mainly you can visit our central hub at GodspeedMinistry.com and all of the information is there. And if you want to continue your worship through giving, which is always goes to God, then we invite you to do that also through our central hub, GodspeedMinistry.com. Now, let's get into why you came into the message.
Before we get started, there was a there was a boy sitting on a on a stoop one day, and uh, his dog was next to him there, and, and uh, a man came over and said to him, uh, hey, "Son, he goes, oh, does your dog bite?" And the little boy said, "No, my dog doesn't bite." He reached down, he went to pet the dog. The dog about bit his arm off, took a chunk out of him, and he started yelling at the boy. He said, "Boy, I said it, your dog didn't bite." And he says, "I did, sir." He says, "But that's not my dog." <laughs> <laughs> I said, oh yeah, how we can misunderstand things in this, probably our racing industry here, the same thing. I thought we did this, I thought we did that. I heard so many stories this weekend about if we did this and if we, and if, man, I'm going to tell you right now, the greatest advice I ever heard, don't live in if, because it's gone. Just today's the day the Lord has made, rejoice and be glad in it. Whatever happened yesterday, it's gone. Ain't no sense in bringing it back. What's it going to do? You know, you can celebrate, but a lot of the things that didn't go your way, people try to bring them up and bring them up. Oh, if we didn't, if we didn't. This is not my message, but I thought it was kind of cool. Just don't live in the if. But anyway, our four-letter word today um, is hope. And I really want to bring hope to you guys for this message today. Um, And my sermon title is The Voice of Hope. You know, I like that song, Ain't No Mountain High Enough. And uh, Rick, you were singing this yesterday, and I don't think you even knew I had this as part of my sermon. But it was kind of funny how he's singing this song, and I'm like, <clears throat> where do you get that from? But um, and maybe I was humming it. But ain't no mountain high enough, ain't no valley low enough, ain't no river wide enough to keep hope from getting to you, babe. We just don't grab it. You know, we all need hope, guys. Scripture says hope is the anchor of our souls. That's pretty powerful, ain't it? That's pretty powerful. Hope is the anchor of our souls. Without hope, people perish. And it's, it's sometimes the last thing that people have to grip to when everything else is gone. When, when someday that, that we were all here, we're all doing what we love, and this is exciting, but someday that, that we're home and we're by ourselves and there's nothing left of this stuff, what do we cling to? Hope. Do you have big dreams? Now, I'm going to ask people, do you have big dreams? Do you? Because people say, well, I don't see a way. Well, you know what I love is I serve a God that does. And there's a lot of things that I could not see a way of. But when I put my faith, my hope, and my trust in the Lord, he's brought it to fruition. And I haven't had to do anything but have hope. Now, you work hard, but when you try to make things happen yourself, Anyway, for me, when I've tried to make things happen myself, it hasn't worked very well. I always say I've got, I've got an amazing team, and I didn't put any of it together. It's just God put these amazing people in my life, and, um, and it's, it's really amazing. It really is. I have, a, I have a true love for each and every one of them, and that's hard to find, that you can't handpick that sometimes. So anyway, Isaiah 40, 31 says this, but those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. Eagles, y'all. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. I love that scripture. I have that in my office. But those who hope in their money, no. Those who hope in their relationship, those who hope in their race car, yeah, (laughs) whatever. (laughs) Um, That's not what it says. It says those who hope in the Lord. Because hope in anything else, and I've had hope in just about everything you could possibly have hope in, has never brought anything like what the Lord brings. You see, but I'm going to tell you what. There's always something, and you all know this, right? There's always something trying to steal your hope. There will always be something trying to steal your hope. And what I, the reason I call this the voice of hope is this song we played this morning will probably stick in your head all day. You'll be like, hey, no, man, just like our love song we had. You know, it sticks in your head. What I want to know is, can you keep the voice of hope in your head? Can you keep the voice of hope playing like that song? You ever, you ever hum and you're like, why am I humming this? Where did I hear this from? You know, where did that come from? We do that with music, but seldom do we do it with the right actions, attitudes, behaviors. We don't think about it. We lose hope. And what I'm saying today is just like this song, Ain't No Mountain High Enough, to play in your head throughout the day. The voice of hope can play in your head throughout the day. No matter what you're going through, no matter where you've been, no matter what's going on out here, out there. A lot of you have things that are going on at home that are, that are hard to deal with. And I say one day at a time. I say hope for this day. 
because we start to worry about tomorrow and the next day and the next day. And the Bible says clearly, do not worry about tomorrow. For today has enough troubles of its own. Why are we worrying about tomorrow? Because we can't see exactly what's going to happen. We lose hope and we get fearful and the enemy comes in and steals everything you got. And it leaves you flat. And we lose hope. And we don't think we can ever get it back. And I know guys, I know guys, oh, I love them to death, but they have no hope in their life. And they say, I just can't have it. And we'll get to why they can't have it in a minute. So anyway, the Bible talks about faith is the substance of things hoped for. Okay? Do you know that you can't have faith without hope? And people are like, yeah, you can. No, you can't. You can't have faith without hope. You've got to have hope. You see, hoping in the Lord and not your circumstances or people is, is first key, okay? When we put our hope in people and our circumstances, there's no doubt some of the most wonderful people in the world will inevitably let you down. Not because they meant to or they wanted to. It's just because we do. We're of a human nature. We just don't act perfect all the time. Some of you may think you do, <laughs> like I used to, but we don't. We just don't. Um, how about the story of David and Goliath? Everybody knows the story of David and Goliath. David's hope was in the Lord. Because you had Goliath, armor, huge, kill anything in sight. And you had David, who said, I can't wear that armor, it's too clunky. Probably walked out like I did, shorts and flip-flops. Had his little slingshot and a stone. And struck that giant right between the eyes and killed him. Do you think his hope was in his abilities? I don't believe so. His hope was in the Lord. And how many of you have your Goliaths out there? You know, that story is like, it's like me getting a go-kart and calling my buddy Antron Brown and saying, let's line up out here. I'm going to take you down, man. I'm going to take you down. He can spin the tires, blow up, and everything and still beat a go-kart probably, right? And that's what that story David and Goliath's like. But God came through and said he made a way where there's no way. And nobody thought there'd be a way. But he had hope. I'm going to use you, Don. Hope. Man is filled with hope. When we first talked, there was a concern. And as we talked, his concern moved to hope, right? And the hope has given hope to other people throughout the country. And so I was a listening ear to him. And then when I was going through some stuff, remember going through the doctor? He was giving me a voice of hope. That's pretty powerful. But he chose it. And scripture says... Your faith has healed you. And Don, I believe that. Your faith has healed you. I believe that. Anthony, I got to use you, brother. My buddy Anthony, let me tell you a little story. Anthony Supper's here. We met at Galat, first race this year. I pulled off the racetrack, and his trailer was right there, and I stopped, and he came out and said, Move it, I can't get my junior out, yelling, screaming at me. No, <laughs> he didn't. He just came up and said, Hey, what's going on? We just hit it off, man. We just started talking and talking. And what I've got to learn from you, my friend, this year is never to lose hope. See, we've been battling for all this stuff that really doesn't mean a whole bunch out there. It's cool, but Rick says, you know, you wake up the next day, it's another day, that stuff's gone, and we're just going to enjoy whatever day we have. But he would struggle, right? I mean, leaving the points, everything, right? Struggling. Anybody that knows the junior dragster class, I don't care what class you race in, online, whoever's watching, that class, those classes of 40-something cars, 50, trying to get in 16, and you got the hundredth to get in, that is the hardest class out here. No doubt for these parents that struggle and, and kids that are driving and they're driving. The, they're leaving actually on the tree. They're not going, pink, you know, big deal. They're leaving on the tree. They're driving the other end. And when they didn't qualify, you know, he'd go right up to me. He goes, that's all right. We've got another race coming. No big deal. Because Anthony always has hope. I've never seen him go, oh, man, I'm just never going to win. Never seen that. And I love that. Thank you for that, Anthony. That is just an amazing thing. And anybody that doesn't know a lot of our junior kids, you should get talked to them because their attitudes are so much better than ours. So much better than ours. The parents, <laughs> not so much. <laughs> but I'm one of them. Where is he at back there? I see he's fine. <laughs> but, but I'm one of them, and I know, and I used to say, oh, man, they get so crazy about that. But, man, I remember, you know, my kid's doing it the first time, and then the announcer's saying something, and I'm like, oh, did I really have that reaction? <laughs> but, um, but we got to keep the hope, okay? We got to keep the hope. So what voice are you listening today? Is it hope or is it despair? It is, there's a choice there, right? 
Don't let someone steal your hope. Do you know that there are professional hope stealers out there? Prof their profession is stealing hope, and you know a lot of them. You see them coming a mile away, and you're like, oh, Lord, I hope I've got enough hope in the bank because they're going to try to rip out everything I've got. And I'm telling you, I can be a Christian brother and stand here and say, some people i got to get away from, and ain't nothing wrong with that because I set my boundaries. I don't want people stealing my hope. I don't want people stealing my joy, even though I would allow that. But I want to surround myself with people who have hope, who have joy, who, who dream big dreams. And they say, man, I'm just, I'm just keeping hoping. I'm just keeping hoping. I'm keeping hoping. I love that. You see, years back, I don't know if many of you remember when I had a serious crash in South Georgia. Long story short, jumped in another car to drive, da, da, da. Everything was fine. Broken oil line. Broken oil line on the left side of the car. Luckily, the opponent here... Broke before he left the starting line, God thing. I went right lane, left lane. And the car happened to be burning nitromethane. So when it hits the wall, it doesn't just go poof, it goes boom. Bam chicken. Oh, bam chicken. <laughs> <laughs> bam fried chicken. Bam fried chicken. <laughs> and I remember, it's clear as day, one wall, the other wall, blah, 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 you know, whatever. Um, and having to get surgery on my arm because I, I severed a tricep tendon. Um, and it wasn't from the crash. People said, oh, it must have been impact. That was me trying to get out. So I'm freaking out. I'm trying to bash the door open, but I was hitting the roll cage. But anyway, um, I had to have surgery, right? So we had three weeks. Okay, we got three weeks. I sat in the car. I'm like, okay, I know they're going to do surgery. They're going to put you in a little brace or whatever. And I knew where the steering wheel was. So I sat in the car. I took a measurement from here to here. I knew where my arm had to be, okay, because it's my steering wheel arm. I said, okay, that's where I got to be. I took this measurement. I'm already hoping. I'm already hoping. I have this surgery, but I'm coming back. I'm already hoping. We go have the surgery. I figure no big deal. You know, I wake up. My arm is like those cartoon characters. I'm not like this. I'm like, what's this? I gotta be here. <laughs> He's a little more severe than we thought. Um, had to reconnect the tendon, but it's got to be like this so that it stretched to reach. And now you've got to work on it, work on it, work on it. And it puts you in this brace. And I remember I'm working and working and I never lost hope. And I had people praying. And we pray, and you know, and Lord, if it's your will for me to get back in that car, it will be. And but I never lost hope, because we we were running for points and you know all that stuff, and and um, don't want to let your team down. So I, I I got it. I got right to that point. I got right to that point, and I got to the racetrack. Got in the car. I remember having a big old brace on. Once I got in the car, they would unstrap the brace, and then I was good to go. Right. Um, but I never lost hope, is what I'm saying, guys. I kept my hope. I remember the first pass we go out there. Man, things on a run, beautiful hiking the wheels. Anybody knows? Screw blown pro extreme cars. Something happened and it went boom. And when it went boom, your first reaction is oh. And when you do that and you tighten and this tendon hurts, I got out crying. And I remember saying, Lord, I don't know if I can do this today. And this was in Rockingham when we were racing. But I never lost hope. And all of a sudden it rained. It was not scheduled to rain. This is a true story. It rained, and it rained, and it rained, and they called the race, and it stopped raining, and it never rained again. Uh, that is a true story, but I did not have to get back in that car again that weekend. But I never lost hope, and even when I didn't know if I could do it, I still kept hope that one way or another this was going to work out. I'm just saying, guys, it's, it's pretty cool. So, anyway, <clears throat> are you still excited about things? I see difficulties will come but they don't have to derail you, okay? Guys, remember that. Don't get derailed, okay? Are you excited about things? Are you still believing? Are you still believing? This is a question for each and every one of you. Are you believing? Are you hoping for something? All of you should have hope today. All of you should leave here with hope. And if you weren't when you got here, then I hope you are, hope you are, when you leave. I hope you are. You see, the Bible talks about this. Proverbs says, hope deferred makes the heart sick. When we're not hopeful, something's wrong on the inside. People who have any hope, they're sick. And you can see it. You can see it plain as day. If you don't think that ailments can come from not being hopeful, I'll disagree 100%. I will disagree 100%. There is no doubt. And this is what I love. People will say this. People will say, what if what I'm hoping for doesn't happen? What if it does? Amen. What if it does? What if you go out here and you go, I haven't won first round in 12 weeks. And that was me years back. I remember 
but I never stop hoping. I'm gonna win first round today, what if you don't? Well, I'll win it the next time. Anthony, what if you didn't qualify? I'll get it the next time. Never stop, he goes like this, whatever. Oh, I love that attitude, I need that. <laughs> That's awesome. But what if it does? You're always gonna have people say, it can't, it won't, it never, forget it. And you're gonna say, no, I'm gonna be hopeful. And they're gonna say, eh, what if this doesn't happen? Well, what if it does? That's all you gotta say. What if this whole thing, what if this whole thing that people laugh at sometimes, oh, Christianity, whatever, whatever, whatever. What if, and I tell people that, I, I, know, I know atheist friends who, who come to the end and they say, well, what if it's not real? And I'd say, well, what if it is? And they've come to the end of themselves and they've given their life to Christ and they've changed everything. Everything, I've seen it. You, and, you, and you can see it. And you see people who have changed and you're like, that's not the same person. Their hope was in everything else. But when they changed and they put their hope in the Lord, they're not the same people anymore. I'm one of those people. I was always a good guy. But I, I did not, I did not have the Lord in my heart. I did not. And my hope was skewed by every circumstance that you can come about. There's a true story, this is 100% true, of this class. There was a girl, she was hopeful for a good grade. She was hopeful, and she was praying, and she was hopeful. And they went into the class, the big college professor, college class, um, as many of you know, they're huge. Um, and this professor was the toughest. Here came the big final. So this is going to make or break her. She was hopeful to get an A. She was hopeful. She studied. She prepared. She was hopeful. She went in that class, and this was so class, so hard that 50% of people never made it. They, they failed. They'd have to retake this course. They all went in there, and the professor said this. He said, all of you here, he said, if anybody wants a guaranteed C, you can get up and leave this class right now. Turn in your paper, and you'll have a guaranteed C. 95% of the people left the class. And I might have too, I don't know. She was hopeful and she stayed. So very few were left, I think five, six. He said, okay. And he said, the rest of you are here. He goes, turn over your paper and begin. She turned over her paper and it said, congratulations, you've just received an A. Oh, wow. <laughs> nice. Don't run, guys. Yep. You could be running away from something great. Don't run. Have hope. I love that story. You know, and like I talked about Don, you can be a voice of hope to others. You know, with racing, what we do here, Anthony, voice of hope, our attitudes, our encouragement. Do you believe your words can help other people? Do you believe that? There's no doubt that your words can help other people. I've called, Renee, we've talked, Gary, we've talked. These words, the hope that they give is never based on the circumstance. It's based on our God. And it's amazing. I had a guy last week who was just on my heart. I'm driving to work. Haven't heard from him in a while. He's a very upbeat guy. And I'm like, he never needs anything. He's always up. And it was on my heart to call him. On my, and I mean, I'm telling you, the Lord didn't speak out loud, but it, it sure as heck felt like it. Got to call him, got to call him, got to call him. I'm almost at work. I call him. I'm like, hey, buddy, how's it going? And uh, he's like, that's all right. And I'm like, ooh, what's going on? Well, we start talking. A lot of stuff going on in his life, and he had lost hope. And I'm preparing this message. This is just last week. And we started talking, and I started telling him about a message, about hope and about this and about that. He had some bad business dealings, and somebody really did him wrong. Um, and he loves the Lord with all his heart, and he just can't understand what, what. But he was so focused on this circumstance that he lost hope in where he was going. We talked about 30, 45 minutes. And um, went about my day. Next day, he calls. He goes, man, he goes, you have no idea what your phone call did for me yesterday. I got this, 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 boom, boom, boom. So if you don't think the voice of hope can change things, you're wrong. All of you are a voice of hope to someone, somewhere, somehow. Don't ever think that you're not. Because Satan will tell you every time, you can't offer them hope. They're, look how, they're big, you know, they're, they're millionaire, they're whatever. You ever, you ever see that? People go around, people who are prominent in society, and they kind of, they kind of, Scope around them. You just go up to them. What's up, brother? How you doing, man? How's it going? You can be a voice of hope. I don't care what you got in the bank, because it ain't gonna last. You ain't taking it with you. But where's your hope? Where's your faith? Where's your trust? I love this. And I'll tell you who said this in a minute. To the world, you may be one person, but to that one person, you may be the world. Dr. Seuss. 
<laughs> Who'd have thought, right? I can. I mean, Who'd have thought? Do you know that that you could be the world to one person? People are struggling or gonna struggle with what you've gone through. You got to use where you've been to help people get out of where they're at. And if you're going through something, you're helping others through it. When you take your focus off of you, it changes everything. Don, am I right? When you go out there and you're raising money for this person, this person, this person, and God's just blessing you, man, with this and this, and these people are loving you, and you're like, he didn't sit home and go, poor me. And you could have, but he did because the voice of hope is what rings true. You see, you want to know what hope is? Jesus died for me and you. That's hope. That's hope. I don't have to understand it all. I don't have to know everything. I don't have to have a seminary degree, but I have hope. I have it. You know, the prayer of salvation, people think it's this big, oh, I've got to go here, I've got to go there. No. No, it's not. <clears throat> Forgive me, Father, for my sin. Come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. It's so easy. It's so easy privately, publicly, wherever you want. But I'm telling you, for me, it has changed everything. And when I don't understand something now, I don't have to figure it out because I have hope that his plan is better than mine. Your will be done. We talked about this on the track walk yesterday. Not my will. So the hope is that maybe my will and God's will are aligning and we're working together, that's great. Maybe I'm not. And maybe what I'm hoping for, he's not going to give me. That's great too. Because when my faith, my hope, my trust is in God, it doesn't matter what's going on. Because there is where I'm going to sit. There is where I'm going to stand. And when I feel like I'm going to fall, I've got people I can call on because they're going to give me the voice of hope as well. You see, you can have disbelief, you can have distrust, you can have doubt, you can have despair. You like those Ds? Or you can have hope. You see, here's the deal. The choice is yours to make. People ask me, why do you always say that? Why do I end my columns in DI with the choice is yours to make? Why do I end all the sermons with the choice is yours to make? Because here's the truth. You're responsible for you, period. But we want to sit here and blame everybody else for us. We want to say, well, I was brought up this way, or my parents were this way. That's why I'm this way. That's why I have no hope. No, it's because you're choosing it. If I speak a message to you and it's true, you can choose that and choose this, what we're talking about, or you can go out and listen to every other negative thing that the world's going to give you. You can choose to watch the news, like I say, for six hours a night, but I guarantee you, you're not going to have much hope after that. Or you can choose to go, you know what? I'm going to sit down. I'm just going to listen to you, Lord. I'm going to, I'm going to call some people. I'm going to give them hope. I'm going to love on them. I'm, I'm going to make a difference. That statement, the choice is yours to make, means that the choice is only yours. People can lead you in the right direction, but they're not going to make you. You know, when you were a little kid and somebody said, oh, why'd you jump off the thing? Oh, because little Johnny jumped off the thing and I went. And they, oh, don't do what little Johnny does. Okay, why'd you rob the convenience store? You're at the police station. Because my friend did it. All right, he let you go. No, you're going to jail. You've got to stop blaming other people for what's happened or where you've been and start choosing the voice of hope. This voice of hope, it's there for the taking. But a lot of us don't take it. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And when I'm serving the Lord, I'm loving all of you the way I should. I'm loving people differently because my hope is in God. I'm loving my team. I'm serving them. I want to be the best Christian man I can be, but I'm nowhere going to be perfect. And when I, I falter or, or something happens, I got great voices of hope right in my team, and I love it. I love it. So guys, today, the choice is yours. Will it be hope, or will it be havoc? I pray that you choose hope, and never let it go, and never let anybody steal it from you. Remember, it can change your life. Let's go in prayer. Lord, I just thank you for this message you put on my heart, Father. I wrote it, and then I figured as I read it, I needed it. And Lord, even as I preached this this morning, I need this. I need this because I myself, I get swayed. Circumstances pull me away. 
and all of a sudden I forget where my hope should be. And I know a lot of us do that here, Father. We just want to give it to you and we want to say, you know what? <coughs> We're just going to put our hope in you. What if it doesn't happen? Well, what if it does? Lord, I'm just so grateful to be here, so grateful for this day, so grateful for our racing community and the love that we have. Let us bring the voice of hope to everyone we meet today, tomorrow, next week, next month, all through the year. It's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. We pray you were blessed by today's message. We have some amazing people who are willing to go to the four corners of this nation to tell you about the gospel of Jesus Christ. And if something in the message today, in the service of the music or whatever you saw or heard, touched you, and you want to reach out to us, please do so. Our information will be here. You can reach out to the ministry at 704-473-4212. Or you can get all of our information at GodspeedMinistry.com. We want you to know God personally, powerfully, and passionately. Because we are preparing to become His bride when He returns for us, or when we leave this earth. So we want to make sure that you have that relationship with Him. That's our main priority. It's not just to give you a head but a heart knowledge to be adopted by the King of the universe and the Lord of Lords and to have all your sins washed away so that you walk in victory in this world. Godspeed ministry exists to connect people to God and then to each other in service to bring other people who are hurting, lost, worried, confused, and afraid into the saving knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. And if that's you, make sure that you reach out to us. You can reach out to us in the comments, in the messenger, and again at GodFeedMinistry.com. We look forward to hearing from you. And if this message was a blessing to you and you are already walking with God and this just fired you up to walk even closer with Him, leave us a heart and let us know. And we'll see you in heaven. Godspeed.